Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another uh, full breakdown video for you guys. I said a couple days ago when I dropped a video that if you guys want to see a full breakdown of either the Niners, the uh, Saints, or the Packers, let me know in the comments section and uh, hit the like button. You guys did that, so I'm bringing you a full Niners breakdown. This one here is probably my favorite playbook in the game right now. Now, if this is your favorite playbook, you can always check out all my eBooks. Links in the description below, or check out MadMoneyShot.com and uh, check out all the playbooks that I've done throughout the year. Uh, if you guys want me to continue to do this series once a month, uh, next month maybe I'll do the Saints the, the, or the Packers. Those are two of uh, the more popular uh, requested ones. Uh, let me know in the comments section again or hit the like button. Other than that, let's go ahead and let's get right into the video. Next up, we got the 0 1 trap. This is a good inside run. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good inside runs this year, but when you have like the. the, the for some reason, like. The, the 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 defensive players almost seem to like follow the blockers, you know what I mean, rather than follow the ball. Like it's really strange. So with their when they're moving around, it's gonna create a lot of space. I don't know I don't know if it, if I'm explaining that right, but you can see right there like that linebacker almost took himself out of the play in the center of the field. So um, yeah, inside runs are really the way to go, and this is a really consistent one. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. So I'm going to run this type of play against a lot of cover threes, cover fours. You can see how the blocking uh, can stretch out uh, and help you get to the edge. It doesn't really hold. The blocking on the stretches don't hold the way they have in years past, but still successful. Sometimes you find it's best just to cut it inside uh, because they just don't really latch on the way that they have in years past. So, But still really good against outside, outside runs or outside defenses like cover three, cover four where the cornerbacks drop back. Next up, we have the halfback zone. So here's another play that looks like an inside run, but it's really just an outside run. It's really a stretch run that you don't take past the receiver. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm reading the diagram wrong, but ultimately, yeah, you definitely want to come off this tackle. I mean, right here, if, the, if that guy breaks off the edge tackle, you got to turn it back up inside. But if he holds that block like he's supposed to, that's typically the, the lane right there. Uh, that's another one like you know there's a couple different ways that this hole can open up you can see right there it's all dependent on this edge defender uh, though this time it was probably one of the more unique ones as you can see right here if he gets if he holds that block just like that you take it outside uh, you can see he pulls him out so much though it knocks him down to the point where I have to take it uh, inside of him because obviously stretching it out further would be a problem uh, but there's multiple holes never do you typically run it outside the receiver though typically you run it inside the receiver that's what makes this an inside run not an outside run technically next up we have the pa stretch it's another play you just want to streak the tight end uh typically drag the y route and that b route is going right for where a cover two is most vulnerable uh, as you can see right there i mean it's not like a home run play but you can definitely make a big play out of it next up we have the stretch alert x looky another good play uh it's good against uh i mean the uh, the outside run the outside stretch run here is going to be good against cover three off cover four runs um if you flip the play uh you don't actually see anything uh, so there's no like adjustment as far as the, the, the your opponent would pick up. Um, you could also motion across the slant route, uh, give a little you know you can if you if you snap him before he actually gets set, he's another blocker, uh, which is good. But uh, I would probably wait till he gets out a little further than that. You just have to snap behind the line so he doesn't actually run the route. Next about a single back ace, we have the zone alert Z smoke. This is a play if it's a cover three. Uh, you could throw to the, uh, the B route, but obviously if the safety's on the cover three side, um, it's not going to work out too good. It'd be something that you probably want to flip the play. You can see right here we got more separation now. There's no safety over there. Uh, but ultimately, that's going to be the best uh, best against cover three and cover four. Against cover four, there's nobody on either side. Other than that, um, I also would like to run away from the safety. Uh, so that'd be best against in the run play. So right here, like I said, cover three. It's a really good cover three, cover four play. Next up, we got the four verticals. Against cover three, uh, 
and cover two. Motion out the B route, put the X route on a drag, block the running back. Uh, the drag's a good check down. Against cover three, the RB route will get open right in the seam. Uh, it's pretty consistent play. Against cover two, uh, you're gonna motion, like I said, the motion here is gonna get open. So we're gonna go, we're gonna pick cover two. Uh, we can just change this up. If it's cover two, just streak uh, the RB route. That's all you really gotta do. So like I said, right here, B route gets outside of cover two. Uh, tight throw, bit, bit to the boundary. He didn't even catch it. We'll do it one more time. I said against cover two, you can motion snap him because if you let him get set all the way to the boundary, that's part of the problem as to why he uh, why he ran out of space. So like I said, right there, cover two, get outside, cornerback trail a little bit. I keep forgetting to put the drag. Uh, you have to, that's part of the reason that the drag is important against cover two. So we'll set that one more time. The drag will help pull that cover two safety down. So let's go and let's do that again. Either way, he's catching it. All right, next up we got the sluggo seam. All right, so against cover one, man, uh, I'm just going to streak these other routes. I can block the tight end, but I want to streak somebody to try to pull coverage away uh, because this sluggo is really just a man beater. Uh, and if I could if I could get this up away from the safety, it's going to be a, a cover one touch, a cover one one play touchdown. Uh, it's a good play, but it really, uh, you know, you have to have a good route running receiver or a lot of speed like Goodwin has because it's not 100%. You got to watch that route. It's not always going to, it's not 100% going to work every time, but it's very it's very consistent. Next about the single back deuce close, we got the bench. So this play right here. Uh, the Y routes can typically beat cover threes outside. Uh, the X routes, you can dot that up against cover three, but it's more the X routes are more, uh, the receiving routes, I should say, are more cover two based. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll pick the Tampa two. Uh, you can make that even better if you streak the Y route and motion across um, the, uh, the tight end here. Um, and you just put him on like an out route or something like that. I mean, you can create bigger spacing for the X route against cover two uh, by, by dressing it up with these other routes. Uh, but it's a pretty decent cover two route by itself. Without any adjustments, really. And like I said, against cover three as well. I mean, you can dot this up against cover three, against cover four, that route will get open. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. So, just a good outside run, nothing really to it. Uh, typically, these uh, receivers do a pretty good job of setting the edge. It's going to be good against cover three, cover four, any off coverage, zone coverage, that's going to be weak to the outside. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. All you got to do is put the A route on a streak, and the B route will be a good cover two play. Uh, to the outside. If you have a real fast uh, receiver, I mean, he could be going. Deshaun Jackson there had an opportunity. Uh, but if you want, if you really want the catch and run space, you got to run it to the open side of the field. Just going to do that one more time. So, like I said, right there. I mean, it's it's a big play. Next up, we get a tight end angle. So against cover three, uh, two doesn't matter. Cover four, man, the X route here. Uh, it's going to get outside of all of them because of the tightness of the formation. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what, what formation you're running it against. If you drag the A route, though, uh, I mean, cover two is probably going to do one of the better versions against it. But dragging the uh, the A route, although already, honestly, the B route's on a drag, too. So it doesn't really matter. One of the two has to be on a drag. One of the two has to be on a streak. And that's going to help get the, uh, the this, this route open against cover two. I'll do that one more time. I really find it's best to drag the tight end. I think that the tight end is just going to get across the formation faster. And that's what's going to help to pull that coverage for that X route. As you can see right there, we're just bullet and pass leading up the field uh, for a big play. Next up, we got the four verticals. So this play doesn't take any adjustments. Uh, the B route's a good outside route against cover two. You just have to bullet uh, and pass lead to the outside and safe catch at the boundary. Uh, depending on how much space you have if you have more space it'll be a little bit easier uh, you know obviously I'm running at the center of the field uh, but it's a good play it's something you can do pretty consistently next up we got the stretch alert bubble
this is a cover three or a cover four play uh, anything where um, they play off coverage so I can run the ball against an off coverage and have success to the outside or I can throw the screen throw the bubble screen it just doesn't really matter if you run it against cover three uh, which I don't actually I think I'm in right now if you run against cover three the Y route um, is is, uh, is is gonna be a good uh, like I said it's a good off coverage play uh, but ultimately if you're running in cover three you really have to go to the opposite side of the box safety or else you're gonna run into trouble if you run into the box safety you're gonna run into trouble if you throw at the box safety you're gonna run into trouble except we got the close PA cross so this is another play uh, cover play one or cover three won't play touchdown you just have to wait for this X route to cross and you can see right here I mean, we're just you know it didn't quite have the separation I was expecting but it's still a good play still beats the safety against cover four it's essentially the same thing no real adjustment needed uh, the B route here might be uh, I mean you can you can make an adjustment and I'll do that in a second here but the X route here is still gonna be gone regardless so I don't yeah that short was that throws a little bit short because he was gone by more than that uh, but ultimately like I said you don't need any adjustments in it to cover three and cover four one play touchdown next up we get the halfback stretch alert smoke Against cover three, uh, whichever side is opposite the safety side, you're going to want to run the, uh, the play. Uh, the smoke's a good play against cover three. Just got to kind of catch that and, you know, get to the sideline to get away from the get away from the linebacker. The run play is good against cover three and cover four. Against cover four, there's no safety in the box typically. Um, but running it to the stretch play to the, to the cover three side is best because the cornerback plays off. Against cover two, this, they're both going to run into problems. Next up, we get the tight end attack. Just streak the A route. Uh, the RB route, you can do whatever you want. You can put them on a drag, a flat, whatever. Um, but ultimately, against cover two, the B route will get outside release of the cornerback, and you can just bullet and pass lead to the sideline. Uh, make sure that you safe catch on the sideline so you don't go out of bounds. Uh, the one pass play, which is the PA wide drag wheel. The pass play goes, um, the uh, PA wide drag wheel. Uh, most people probably should know this setup by now. It's something I've noticed people running this year. Uh, it's something that I actually put out a couple years ago. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to take credit for it. But ultimately, I, I did put this out a long time ago. And I think it was last Madden. I used to run this like in solo battles, like every play because it was so cheese. Uh, and then last man, I think they actually patched it. It wasn't working at all. It seems to be working again. All you really have to do is streak the A route, put the X put the X route on a drag. Um, and this is pretty much uh, the play. Now, if it's an all-out man blitz like it is, um, this B route's typically going to be a one-play touchdown. Against that, against man coverage, um, it's going to be a big play against most zone plays. But this is pretty much, like I said, these are the, these are the four uh, plays that I would say I use the most. And then, like I said, I'll have a couple of additional plays. Um, here, it looks like we probably have a, a zone coverage there. You can see, like I said, against certain zones, you definitely got to get the right type of pass because, like I said, I think they actually patched this recently. I don't know if that was a cover three or a cover four or what it was, but, like I said, this is being run enough that EA decided to put something in the game where these guys uh, kind of just react and sit on the routes. Like this is, I'm not sure what this is. I guess I've got to check this out. It looks like it might be a, I'm not sure. This looks like it might be a couple of quarters. I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but like I said, they do it. This is something I noticed started having recently where these where these guys are sitting on these routes, but they're still opening if you make the right throw. So he can sit there all he wants, but if I throw it up the field, then what are you going to do? So like I said, still a really broken play. But like I said, I have noticed EA has been, uh, been, been making little adjustments on some of these more run plays. So here we go again. Like I said, against cover three and cover four, um, this this route's going to be very good underneath. It's not necessarily going to be a one play touchdown, but um, with, with how slow usering is, I mean, this is something I still use this in. in, uh, in I can put you know gameplay links for this as well because I have used this quite a bit uh, in gameplay. The the user's so slow that um, you know, they can't really have an effect. They can't really chase these routes like they could in the past. A lot of linebackers really aren't that aren't fast enough. 
Um, so it's like something like this, which probably this B route probably would have been used in previous Maddens. Uh, you really can't now. So it's like they, they're not they're not really capable of chasing a route like this all the way across the field like they might have been able to in Madden's past. So I'm going to end the video there. Uh, if you guys want to see more stuff out of the Eagles, like I said, this will probably be the next ebook that I put out. Um, hit the like button or let me know in the comments section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. But like I said, I have noticed EA has been uh, been been making little adjustments on some of these more run plays. So here we go again. Like I said, against cover three and cover four, um, this this route's going to be very good underneath. It's not necessarily going to be a one play touchdown, but um, with, with how slow usering is, I mean, this is something I still use this in. in, uh, in I can put you know gameplay links for this as well because I have used this quite a bit. Uh, in gameplay, the the user is so slow that um, you know, they can't really have an effect. They can't really chase these routes like they could in the past. A lot of linebackers really aren't that aren't fast enough. Um, so it's like something like this, which probably this B route probably would have been used in previous Maddens. Uh, you really can't now. So it's like they they're not they're not really capable of chasing a route like this all the way across the field like they might have been able to in Maddens past. Next up, next up we got the jet sweep. Be against, best against man because there won't be a cornerback out here but you can see the way that that block pulls it's not really gonna matter still a really good play still a really consistent successful play um, like I said Goddard here he just kind of kicks out this in the diagram uh, normally there I didn't really run the play too well uh, but like I said very consistent you get it to your fastest guy you get into the edge uh, and you're gonna have uh, good runs here's that man look I was talking about he like said this is uh, the cornerback doesn't follow so that's why um, it's so successful there's no cornerback on the edge but it's been consistent all three runs against no matter what man or zone. Next up we got the stretch alert bubble. The bubble itself is going to be best against cover three and cover four off coverages. Uh, we'll give you a little catch and run. Uh, and, the, and the stretch is going to be two. The stretch to this side uh, is probably going to be best against cover ones. Uh, as you can see, the safety's dropping down here, though. But still, I mean, there's no cornerback outside. There's no outside containment. But I'd probably rather that than Jamal Adams or, or Diggs in this scenario. But either way, cover threes, cover fours. Um, if you motion this guy out, it'll actually push the cover three corner back, which will help you get to that edge. Um, he didn't block anybody, though. But typically, the tight end will do a better job of blocking that edge, def that edge defender. Uh, so that's going to be really the best way to run it. So against off coverage, cover three, cover four, uh, or man coverage, the run will be best. Uh, and then against uh, cover three, cover four, the, the the B route will be best. Next up, we get the halfback inside zone. Another good inside run play. Nice bread and butter type play. I mean, um, you know, the holes the holes open up, bottom line. Uh, a lot of times, these uh, these defenders just take themselves out of the play. Uh, but even if they don't, I mean, the, the blocks hold up. You get some nice sticky blocks, and then you see you can just get some really explosive runs out of this. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. So, flip the play once again. I'm going towards the receiver side. Uh, you can see, I mean, this is really, to me, that's the best way to go. Um, you know, the receiver's uh, doing a really good job, even though it's not really like a blocking receiver. It's just doing a pretty good job of maintaining that edge. Um, so, really consistent run. You can run either way, though. Um, just you know, you just have to look for where your plus one is, and that's where the receiver side is. You can also motion across one of the tight ends. Uh, you know, it can give away where the play's going. Uh, but if you want a blocking advantage, especially against like a zone, I wouldn't say against a man it's a good idea because you'll pull a defender in the area. But if you motion across against the zone, I mean, a lot of times you're going to get an even better blocking advantage. Although there, he didn't block anybody because I motion blocked him. Uh, but ultimately, you know, you can do that. You can motion across uh, an extra tight end. Next up, we got the jet sweep. So against like cover three, cover four, off coverage, um, you know, these type of, of runs can be very successful because there's nobody in the box. The only thing I really get this issue would be like a cover two, really. Wouldn't be best against a man coverage either because there's going to be a man cover corner out here uh, regardless. Uh, you can see sometimes it opens a hole right over the middle and it's not a bad idea just to take that hole if it's there. Next up we got the stretch alert X lookie. I'm really just treating this like a stretch. I'm not too worried about the pass. Um, you know, I just that 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 just is problematic to me. This is just a stretch play, in my opinion. You can flip the play, run it the other way if you want. Uh, if you have a cover three, uh, and there's a, a box safety, 
A lot of times you can motion this guy out, give yourself a blocking advantage. Like even here, it's still going to do it against a cover two. Uh, you can see it's just basically going to seal that edge out further. So those are really the only adjustments that I would make. Next up, we have the jet pass fake zone. It's a good outside run. Um, if you have off coverages like cover three, cover four, or even man coverages, because typically when you run against man coverages, the cornerback doesn't follow. Um, it can be a very consistent play. Typically, I wouldn't think that it makes a lot of sense uh, running this towards um, the boundary as much as right in between the, the, the tight end and the receiver. That's where you're going to have your most space is right between that giant gap. Next up, we got the shark halfback wheel. It's a good play against cover three. Just motion out Sanders here. And uh, he's going to, he doesn't beat outside like he used to, but he'll get separation outside. Just the bullet and pass lead to the boundary. Um, he used to just beat underneath for catch and run. Next up, we got the PA deep outs. This is a good uh, cover four quarters play. All you're going to do is put the A route on a comeback, and that's it. That's all she wrote. It's going to be a one play touchdown from the Y route if I can get a little bit of blocking. Against cover four quarters, uh, just block the running back, put the A route on a comeback, and the Y route is going to be a super easy one play touchdown. Just float it up, treat it like a man coverage. There, I probably should have waited a little bit for the throw, but you can see, I mean, it gets behind it. Let's go and do that one more time. Set that cover four quarters one more time. Cover four quarters, cover four palms, anything like that. Uh, like I said, I'll roll out just to be safe. And then, like I said, I mean, I'm just bombing it up uh, for an easy, easy score. So anybody that runs that defense again is just getting glitched. Next up, we have the strong curl. Against cover two, you really don't have to make any adjustments. Um, putting the uh, Sanders in a smoke route, motioning over Ertz and putting him on a streak is going to make a bigger opening to the to the where the Y route's going. That's about all I can say. I mean, that's you can make you know, like I said, this can be a one play touchdown if you have, if you run to the open side of the field and have a lot of space. Um, but that's pretty much going to be it. <clears throat> um, but you could also motion in Sanders and put the A route if you don't want to motion. Um, Earth across, put him on a drag, and it'll have a similar effect. You can see right here the, the Y route gets hit though, uh, and it makes the play a little bit longer to develop as I get sacked there. But like I said, there's a couple different ways to do it um, so that you, you know, if you want to have a couple different looks, say your opponent's on to one of the looks, uh, you can see how you can have success here. Like I said, the throwing one is a little bit tighter too, so obviously, in my opinion, the first way is better. Next up, we got the close halfback wheel. I like to motion this running back out right here. Against cover three, I mean, he typically gets out into the flat. Cover three, cover four, any off coverage, really. Uh, cover two seems to be giving that up this year as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'll confirm that by running it against cover two one time. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it seems to be doing that a lot. So, like I said, right here, cover two is even getting beat worse. Next up, we got the fullback inside. Another good run play from this formation. Um, you can really go any number of ways. It's an inside run, but I find it best to bounce it outside the other direction. Uh, so, like I said, you have the lane here, but you can see it's really really more of an outside run. Uh, but both runs are explosive. Next up, we got the PAF slide. This play right here, I mean, you're just kind of playing the high-low route concepts off one another. I typically find it best just to hit this running back underneath especially when it comes to like cover threes cover fours off coverages um, if you have like a, a tampa two it might not work out as well it's not going to be that good against man necessarily either but you see even against tampa two so pretty much any zone coverage he's going to get underneath uh, you're going to have good play good catch and run plays Against man coverage, a lot of times uh, they'll trail because it kind of crosses them up. So you can see this route's good against just about any defense uh, for an easy catch and run. Next up, we got the power O. It's a good run play. Um, I mean, the blocking really shouldn't, like receivers, really shouldn't be mowing dudes down like that. Uh, but it's one of the better run plays. Uh, very consistent. I mean... Um, you know, look at this. I mean, there's just huge run lanes to the outside. One of the better run plays in the game. 
Except we got the bench. Against cover three, I mean, you can run us as is. Uh, the Y route can really dot up the cover threes for some reason. Mostly because the, the, the cover three kind of gets pulled the other way because the other route's deeper, I guess. I don't know. It's just the way it works against this, against cover three. It's not a home run play necessarily. Uh, but it can, it can also have the same effect against cover four. Uh, that same route can be successful. Um, it just has to break outside here. And then you can see you can dot that up again. But ultimately, it's better against cover three. Most explosive against Tampa 2, against cover 2. Uh, I want to motion over Ertz. I accidentally motioned over to Sean. It really doesn't matter, though. Ultimately, um, I, I just, you know, streaking uh, to Sean will get this other route open underneath a cover 2 safety and get you a, a really big play. Next up, we got the Bucks post. So, this is a good play for cover 2. Um, you don't really have to do nothing, but putting this guy on a flat is probably the minimum uh the wire out here is really going to get open outside with a good pass lead uh, but there's adjustments you can make to make this play even more explosive against cover two motion across either of these receivers and put them on a streak and then put the x route on a flat and the y route is going to be going uh especially fast uh, as you can see right here that 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 streak really pulls them in and i could have been going for a touchdown but i ran out of bounds uh, but ultimately you can see how explosive that play is Against cover four quarters, um, you can pretty much do the exact same thing. You don't really need to even do anything. Uh, it's just I like the motion this guy out. Uh, gets a one on one with the uh, with that one you know safety, and typically your receiver is going to beat the safety in a cover four quarters because this is essentially a man beating route. Then against cover one man, pretty much going to get the same look. Because like I said, this is a this is a route that beats men. So, you know, I didn't catch it, but you can see they got past him. So it's something I just got to do a little bit better. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. So against man, same deal. Y route. As long as I float that up properly, speed underneath it and catch it. We got a uh, we'll cover one play, touchdown as well. Next up, we got the buck seams. So against cover three, just streak the A and the Y route. And you're just going to have to pass lead away. And it's a tight window, but it's there. Against cover two. Motion over Ertz. Put him on a streak. Put the X route on a flat. You're going to have a really big cover two play to the Y route. Um, you can hit a home run with this. I safe it just to make sure I made the play. But that, if you run it to the open side of the field, it's a home run. Against cover... Um, Cover four, cover four quarters. Just put the A on the comeback, motion out B, put him on the comeback. And you'll get a one on one, uh, which you'll typically win to the Y route. A big win. So, like I said, explosive one play touchdown against uh, pretty much all those defenses. Against uh, man coverage. No adjustments really needed. The Y route's really good against that too. All you gotta do is bomb it up. Lob it up. You know what I'm saying? Run under it, catch. Next up we got the PA Bucks cross. Against cover two. Streak uh streak Ertz motion out Jackson. And it's gonna be a big play to the cover two uh cover two spacing. Like right there, I mean, it's tight because Jamal Adams is out there, but typically that's an easy home run anyway. Next up, we got the PA cross shot for use against a lot of shit. Streak the A route, streak the Y route, and this is pretty much going to be the look no matter what defense you're running it against. Um, you're really just playing the high versus the low coming across. Like we have cover three right here. You can see, I mean, that's going to, you know, that, that, that could really be gone up the seam. Uh, I also find that putting the X on a um, on a streak helps as well. Um, against, like I said, against like cover twos, that route might not necessarily be there as much. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's going to be pretty consistent. Here we got a cover two. Like I said, you can see it's pretty much. It's almost, you know, if I had more room, I could be catching and running this for for much bigger plays if I wanted to move the ball over. So against pretty much any zone, it's going to have that effect. 
That includes cover four, if I have that in the in here. Like I said, this is just, you know, the user ring ain't what it was, so this is something that you can run pretty consistently. So against cover four, um, you can do the same thing. Usering really isn't uh, isn't really what it was. You can see right there. That's going to take a tight throw though. So now we got that cover through. Look one more time. And like I said, I mean that cornerback's just sitting back. Not really something you're going to get going a lot of get with, but it's a really big play. Next up, we got the dagger. Streak the A route, put the Y route, a drag. Maybe block the running back. You don't really need him doing that. And uh, ultimately, against pretty much any man or zone, this B route or this Y route is going to be open for a big play, a chunk play. You're typically not going to turn up for a touchdown. Uh, only cover four gives that last, that last cover four corner will give that route problems. Other than that, I mean, it's going to be very successful against man. Um, this is, you know, giving that the, it's hard to, uh, to use or control anything. As you can see right here, I mean, this is definitely going to be going against man, although I just, you got to float it against man. I probably could have bulleted that and turned up, uh, but that's definitely one of the better man plays. Let's go and let's run against man one more time. Should have blocked my, should have been blocking my running back pretty much every time, but I didn't do that. So like I said, right here, good crossing route against man. Can definitely get go, get ghost against man coverages with that. So let's go and let's start by putting this into the, uh, into the audibles here. We're going to put the first play, the halfback zone week's already in there. I'll put the halfback dive in there. Um, just, you know, that's just something that's good to have. The quick toss we'll put in there. And then the uh, the fourth play is, without a doubt, the halfback off tackle. This is one of the better ones. And then the last one, the fifth play that I'm going to select is going to be the counter week. Now let's get into the reads. Now, the halfback dive, I specifically have that in my reads if I see a look like this where I have a huge gaping hole right over the middle. This is probably one of the only scenarios where I'm going to use that because there is a hole there even though he got off the block. The three main plays though in this are going to be the counter which is the one I'm on right now, uh, the quick toss and the halfback off tackle. Those are going to be the three main ones. The, the zone week is not too bad either. The zone week like in a scenario like this the zone week is going to be a pretty good one. You can see we had a gap uh, right where that zone week play is going although I ran to my own guy. He probably cost me like five yards but without a doubt those are going to be the three main plays. The counter I could have ran that as well. Um, this is going to be like I said to me this is a little bit more of an explosive version uh, of the same play that I just showed. My two personal favorite plays are probably Probably the counter uh, and the zone week. I like to go opposite of where my opponent's going to be thinking that I'm going. Most people are going to expect you to go to the tight end side, to the fullback side, and there's definitely some good plays. A uh, play like this here looks like we have a cover three because uh, that cornerback's going to drop back. So a toss play is going to be a really good play. As you can see, I mean, we just seal that edge uh, and then we can get outside. So the toss, uh, although I really wasn't expecting the blocking that I got down the field as the receivers got down to the safeties, uh, did a really good job there. But you can see how explosive that can be. So that's definitely going to be one of the more explosive plays. Like I said, I, I did identify it as a cover three. This here might be a man coverage, but if it's a cover three or a cover four where the cornerback uh, drops back immediately into coverage, the toss is going to give you one of the better opportunities. Here you can see this was a man, and that's why he basically came down and cut that off. So it's really all about what the defense is that your opponent is running. Uh, when it comes to the zone weak, though, or the counter, you're really just looking for that gap. You're not really looking for a specific coverage. But if you're running outside, whether it's going to be the, uh, the halfback off tackle or the quick toss it's really coverage based so a, a play like this this almost looks like a cover two once again the cornerback is going to play down not necessarily the best look so you really want to make sure that you're looking for uh, a specific uh, gap or a specific coverage when it comes to these plays like you see right there if i have some spacing i'm typically going to go counter so like I said, if I see a huge gap like right there, defensive end, way off to the left defensive from the defensive tackle, obviously on the other side, you know, if I try to run it to the other side, the uh, the off tackle, I'm going to be running right into, you know, no real gaps. So I'm really first looking for gaps to decide if I want to run one of these counter runs. And if that's not there, then I'm typically going to go um, looking at coverage. What's the coverage? That's my second read. So like I said, the, the pecking order to me, I love the counter play. Uh, the quick toss is going to be a good play, but it's coverage specific. Uh, the halfback zone week is is probably uh, one of the better plays, uh, as you can see. I mean, we can, you know, basically, it's just like a counter play. There's just no delayed reaction, and there's no real read either. The counter play, there's a read. You have to read the defensive end. That play, you don't.
When it comes to running the counter play, and I'm going to force it here even though this isn't really the look, um, you really got to read that defensive end. You can see we still had success there. I'll go to the uh, the replay to show you what I'm looking for when it comes to making the read, which is, like I said, you don't have to do this on the on the zone weak play. But you have to read this defensive end. If he stops like he does here, you got to go inside of him. So I'm going to show one pass play for this video, uh, and that's going to be a man-beating play, which is the wide receiver out. This route that the wide receiver out is running, uh, the red route there, um, is a speed out route. It's one of the harder uh, routes to stop when it comes to man coverage. Whether it's man zero, man cover one, or man cover two, this play here is going to be one of the most unstoppable if you get the timing down. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. On the defensive side, I wish I could go random man, but we're just going to go ahead and we're going to pick uh, man cover two to start. So this play here, I mean, it's really all about this speed out route. If you throw this on timing, it doesn't really matter what you're facing. Uh, if you time this pass correctly, you're going to get this receiver open every time. And all you're really doing is throwing it immediately in the break. If you throw it too early or too late, it could easily be an interception. If I throw this ball, you know, before he gets to that point, you can see that I'm throwing an interception. If I throw it after the fact, if I hold it for too long and I give that cornerback an opportunity to flip his hips and turn around, you can see it's going to be an interception. So it's all about timing. And that timing is, without a doubt, when he makes that break. If you throw it in that break, he will be open every single time. I don't care if it's Deion Sanders or, you know, whoever. Whoever it is on that side of the ball covering that receiver or who, are you, who you have, you're going to get it open. That timing there was a little bit off. But you can see I'm going to get that every time. So if it's man cover one, man cover two, I always safe catch two because I think it's just best to do that. Now, if you're going against a man zero or something like that, and you have like an open sideline like I have here, this is an opportunity you can really uh, take advantage and catch this and turn up the sideline. There is opportunities there uh, if your opponent is too aggressive. Uh, but other than that, I typically just like to save catch. So let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, you can try. If you have enough speed, you can try to get past that cornerback, say he misses the tackle, and get an explosive play. Uh, I'm not saying that's necessarily going to happen, but it's definitely an option uh, to try. The only other adjustment I would make is that on this play like this put the b route here on a drag i typically would block these running backs as well especially on a man blitz like i'm selling like i'm setting up for myself right now uh but you can see i mean there's definitely an opportunity if they don't save tackle or say you break that tackle you can be gone on a simple speed out like this so without a doubt one of the one of the better plays to run against man coverage any man coverage and then you have your check down routes also which is your drag uh and even the tight end will get open over the middle so uh but obviously the speed outs the the, the best portion of this play the speed out route uh is the is the play that you're going to be going for but you you can see like i'm having success uh with the with the normal uh, i don't know if that's like a post route or what but you can see if you have an aggressive defense you have a lot of options and then last but not least we have a really good man play and that's the double post we're going to pick that uh and then we're just going to go uh cover two man because that's probably the most uh you know that's when everybody runs this play reminds me a lot of the uh, the cover three zone concept or the cover one man concept that I just put out the skinny posts, uh, where essentially the the two outside receivers will get open against either cover one man or cover three pretty much every time. That's the same way that this is against cover two zone because these cornerbacks are never in the way of getting a, a stop on this ball. And it's the same route on both sides, so it doesn't really matter what your opponent wants to try to use her. Uh, you're pretty much going to have success, although there, um, that bullet, that low pass kind of messed me up. The low pass will make it even harder for the computer to defend, uh, but you can see you can have issues if, you, if the throw isn't correct. But like I said, since it's the same route on both sides, the user's never really going to have success stopping it. Uh, and then you can see, like I said, I'm low passing, safe catching. All those things are just going to kick it up a notch. Although ultimately, you don't really have to do that. You can see I'm having success if I don't low pass. It's the same thing. So like I said, no matter what your opponent does, if he's running cover to man, this is going to dot it up. Uh, and they're pretty much going to have to leave this coverage because there's really nothing they can do. You can't use your, you know, whichever the dominant route is, you can't use it. Uh, so you're basically just going to be just dotting it up the entire time you can see there's nothing that really stops in the cover two man so i'm going to start off with the y trail this is definitely one of my favorites so let's go ahead and let's pick uh that first this is pretty much going to it's going to have a couple different uses but i'm going to start off with cover two so to get into this video like i said there's a couple different things you can do with this we have a good man coverage concept here but i'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this as a cover two zone beater all i really have to do is motion across the a route and put him on a streak and uh this x route is going to be gone i'm going to move the ball over though because you can really be explosive if you run this to the open side of the field Field. So this is pretty much going to be one of the uh, the easier ways to do it. I can put this B route in a drag too. That will also help out when it comes to pulling this cornerback down. But you're really just waiting for this guy to get just you know a little bit past that cornerback, and all you got to do is bullet and pass it outside for a really explosive one play touchdown. But without a doubt, 
you know, the motion, the, the tight end across is probably my preferred way. I do think there's people that motion across uh, the receiver when they run this particular series of offensive plays, but I find the tight end uh, just does a little bit of a better job pulling that uh, safety back. But I'm pretty sure you can do it either way. So this play can also be a one-play touchdown to cover three, but one of the things that's different between this and other cover three one-play touchdowns I'm going to show you in this video is you can run this to the short side. Uh, typically, you want to run the cover three one-play touchdowns to the open side, but for some reason in this particular um, formation, in this particular the play you can actually run to the short side you have to streak the a route you got to motion out the b route and put them on a comeback although i messed that up uh yeah put them on a comeback and this is pretty much all you got to do and for some reason if you have enough speed uh this a route here can really go right over the top so like i said i'm not sure exactly why this works like this but it's a really good one play touchdown now this might be one of the better ones because all the other ones I'm going to show is I accidentally um, motion this guy out. I mean, I guess I can run it like this. I can put him on a comeback the same, leave that slant, uh, and it's going to have the same effect as you can see. I mean, it still creates that separation. You just need somebody on a comeback. So if you want to keep your, your check down slant, you can do that. You could also do that with the, the running back. You know what I mean, like anybody, really. You can do that with anyone, anyone just to, to, you know, whatever for whatever reason, post-patch, the comeback route is one of the better ways um, to, to pull those cornerbacks down. It's just the way that it is. So, like I said, right here, like I said, just bullet pass lead away from the free safety. Uh, the center, you know, the mid-third third safety, you can see you can have an easy one-play touchdown on the short side, which is, like I said, that's one of the better ways to do it based off the fact that most one-play touchdowns are going to be the open side of the field now. Now, in the original video, I said that the uh, the deep the PA deep uh, cross, which is going to be the play that I try to focus on still because it's still one of the better plays in the game. The only difference is obviously uh, the the cover three one play touchdowns and the cover four. I'll go over that as well. Uh, but ultimately, this is going to be um, you know the, the the biggest difference is going to be cover three. All the other setups for the PA deep cross still work. Uh, plays like the PA scissors, the PA deep and the mesh post will all work uh, the same way I'm going to show you on this next play. But like I said, it's best to just use the PA deep cross because you can home run just about any defense with the PA deep cross. So let's pick that. We'll go over a couple more of those cover three one-play touchdowns after this, but let's do this first. So cover three sky. So once again, cover three one-play touchdowns from this formation, you will have to run it from the hash mark to the open side of the field. Um, it's just the way that the, the game is set up now. So run a stretch play, run a toss play, something like that, just to get to the uh, to the sideline. Then you're just going to want to streak the A route and the X route. Put the running back on a pass block, and I'm also going to slide my protection to the left because I'm going to want to try to move in that direction uh, with this defensive end. And you can see how this guy here just gets right over the top. Now, I threw that a little bit early, but let's go ahead and let's watch the replay to see what happened there because it's really all about what the cornerback does. So let's go ahead and let's do that again. Like I said, really easy setup. Just kind of waiting for that cornerback to hesitate. That's all I'm really doing. And now you see right there, he's pretty much just gone. That cornerback just stops, lets that receiver get over the top, and you got a really easy, glitchy one-play touchdown against cover three. So watching it on the replay one more time just to show you guys when you have what you have to look for really uh, is once this guy starts heading up the field, you can see this cornerback here starts to lag off. Once he starts to do that, you want to throw. You can see he comes to a complete stop, which if you throw at this point might be a little bit late because ultimately um, this safety here, once he comes to a stop, this safety here, he's communicating in the program with the safety that this safety has to take over that route. And that's why if you if you throw it a little bit late like this when he stops, the safety is going to have time to catch up. So if I go back here, I probably started throwing right around the time that he uh you know that he was starting to slow down because that's really how i want to do it i want to do it once that cornerback starts to lose interest and then i throw it because obviously i want to stay ahead of that free safety and like i said you can do that with any number of plays here i find the pa deep is really good and the mesh post is really good those two have the crossing routes needed uh to make this play happen all these plays are solid when it comes to uh, one play touchdowns because the b route here is going to have the exact same effect it's still crossing uh, but you can see, I mean, we're, we're going to do the exact same thing. There it looks like I got going by a couple extra yards doing the exact same thing because the cornerback slows down for the crosser. It's really that simple. They're all going to do that. All these plays are going to have that effect just as long as you run them from the open side of the field. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick the PA deep, and I'll show that. So like I said, pretty much, you know, whatever, whatever play you're in will work. Same setup. I'm just going to block all my running backs, slide my protection because obviously I might want the ability to uh, to roll in that direction. And you can see we're just having the same effect. So, like I said, it's a real simple setup. Just got to run from the open side of the field. I'm going to show you guys next some good cover three and cover four plays. There's really two that you can use together. The PA deep cross and the PA scissors are two of them. I think there's another one. Yeah, the FL drive. So you really have three plays that are all going to do just about the same thing. Uh, but the difference is, you know, it 
basically between the FL Drive and uh, the other play I'm going to show, which is the PA Deep Cross, is the different receivers are the ones that are hitting the home run. So that's why it's best to use these in conjunction with one another. So let's go ahead and let's put them into the audibles because, like I said, they are pretty much the same. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys the differences. So FL Drive, PA Deep Cross, we'll start off with that next. Uh, we'll go with the, the PA Deep Cross. And then we're going to start off with Cover 3 Zone. Uh, on the defensive side so basically what i was trying to get at with these two plays having essentially the same route but the different receiver is on them is that will really help you to disguise what the home run route is if you really try to mix it up uh, because your opponent might try to uh, follow the crossing route trying to take away the one play touchdown that i'm going to show you uh, which ultimately you know you can um, you know it's going to be a benefit so like i said this play here you can actually home run cover two with that as well which i'll show in a minute but we're going to start off with that it's going to be the exact same setup no matter which play you run uh this play here if it's a cover three you just want to motion out the x route put them on an out route and the smart route them and that's pretty much going to be all she wrote then you just have to wait for this b route to cross the middle and then you can see you have a really easy one play touchdown against cover three like i said you could do that with the other play going the opposite direction so if your opponent, uh, you know, I mean, there's going to be a cover four one play touchdown setup where you motion this receiver out. That's going to be how you home run cover four. So if your opponent is watching the motions of the routes, uh, you can just easily, you know, mix them up by, by you know, switching up the play and changing who the crossing receiver is. And, you know, that'll just keep your opponent on their toes. Against cover four, all we're going to do is put this X route in a drag, and we're going to motion out the opposite receiver this time. You Basically, to beat cover four, you really have to spread this formation out and deflate the left side of the uh, the deep safeties. So that's all we're really going to do. Uh, and then we're just going to wait for this uh, this B route here to get inside of this uh, this strong safety here, and then we, we don't get the completion. But you can see he got passed. So we'll go and we'll do that again, but I am working with Jimmy Garoppolo here. So, you know, we might not be able to complete the the most spectacular passes in the world based off of who i'm working with uh but you can see without a doubt we're just going to safe catch that because i just didn't have any faith that the rat catch was going to happen but you can see it's passed so we're just going to go into the replay here quick i'm just going to show you guys when to throw the ball basically this guy here once he crosses the uh the the strong safety that's when i'm throwing the ball the second he's inside you can see he's already passed the cornerback and the safety here this safety just barely reacts to him but it's already too late so basically once he gets inside i'm just bullet and passing away i'm sure if I go back to the quarterback, he's already he's already ripping it. Uh, but that's it. I'm just watching that receiver. Once he gets inside of him, like he does right there, bullet pass lead away, and we're just you know switching on and sprinting the space. That's all we got to do. This play can also have a lot of success against cover two zone if you crawl, if you motion across the B route, put the X route on a streak, and then put the A route on a drag. Uh, and this is pretty much going to be the look right here. Uh, and then you just really have to just bullet pass lead to the outside with this B route. And you're going to have success to the outside once again. This is another play where, you know, I can pretty much, um, you know, if I ran this from the open side of the field, from the, you know, the hash mark, the right hash mark, I could probably get a really good catch and run play, but I'm not really going to worry about that. You can see that we're having success here, although for some reason Jimmy G's floating a lot of balls, but you can see it's getting open. So moving on to some man beaters, um, this formation or this, uh, you know, this series of plays really is loaded with them. I showed a man beater yesterday, the, the uh, angle out. Uh, I think I might have called the wide receiver out at the time. Uh, but there's some really good plays that you can use. The PA deep cross is one of them, the play that I was just showing. So we'll show that one more time against cover two man. Uh, and you're going to see with no setup at all, um, this X route, because these receivers are so far inside, they get such a good release uh, that this crossing route, this deep crossing route is going to do a good job and consist about any coverage. Don't really have to do any adjustments, which is nice. You can see he just cooks that inside route. Um, and at any point in time, I can throw that ball. He's going to be open. And you can pretty much run this setup against any defense in the game. If you motion across the B route and put him on a drag, and then put the A route on a streak, uh, you can pretty much run this setup no matter what you're looking at. Whether you're looking at an all-out-of-man blitz like this was, you can just take the drag, um, or the, you know, basically the drag or the crosser is always going to be open. And this is something, like I said, doesn't matter the defense. Man or zone, this is going to be a good setup. Just wait till it gets set. And then you're going to see we have a, uh, a look where this, uh, this X route, especially you can see right here, I mean, the deep crosser, you know, he was open all the way. I probably should have passed lit that up a little bit. I might have been able to hit a touchdown there. But this is something, like I said, this look, this play in particular, obviously, is just a very, um, you know, it's very hard to stop play. There's a lot of things you can do on a play like this. And like I said, all that man blitz, I'm just going to dump it down to the, to the B route. That's always going to be there. The drag's going to be there for the check down. So we're going to do this one more time. The running back, I don't really need that. I can actually do this. I can put him in a swing route if I want, um, and that'll help to pull those coverages down. 
as you can see, like I said, I'm always looking for that big play. And if it wasn't for that sideline, I would have had another touchdown there. But you can see, I mean, this is something that, you know, it doesn't matter. Man or zone, this is going to have success. Like I said, I could do that swing route there. That just pulls coverage down even more, gives me a little bit more of an outlet. But I'm always looking for these big plays. I'm always looking for the big play down the field anyway. And then last but not least, this play can also hit a one-play touchdown. It can really glitch out, um, cover four quarters. So we're going to pick that. I put this defense out yesterday. I said it was one of the harder defenses for people to face. But you can really glitch this out. If you motion this guy across here and then put the X route on a curl, uh, and then also the A route on a curl and the RB route on a curl. That's all you really got to do. Block the running back, give myself a little extra protection. And this B route is just going to go right up the uh, right up the seam there. As you can see, it just runs right past. Um, although the sideline was the bigger issue than the defender. We're going to do that again. Let's go and let's motion this guy across. Like I said, we're just going to curl everybody up. And then block that running back. And then for whatever reason, this B route here. Uh, it's just gone. Like I said, the sideline is really the biggest issue as, I, as I'm just not getting the pass lead up the field that I want. But you can see he's getting by for a very big play. So if I ran this play from all the way to the sideline, it would probably be an even easier one-play touchdown. And then the PA scissors play also has a lot of success against just random zone concepts because you have that high-low route. So I'm just going to pick random nickel. This play here can have a lot of success just going to the, uh, the running back and the tight end. As you can see, this flat route. That's why I was saying make sure you switch this out to an actual speed running back. You can see you can have success right there. That's typically going to be the look under uh, most zones you can see the zones drop back uh, based off of the receiver and the tight end pulling the coverage back so you can steal that all game next up we got the stretch alert x looky another kind of glitchy run play this is eight in the box you got your full but you got your, your your superstar defender right there in the box he's getting he's getting taken on one-on-one -on -one in these uh in these you know plays which is which is unique i mean a regular stretch play he's probably blown it up uh, right there, like you say, he's just waiting to get blocked. There's something really glitchy about these RPOs this year. They really made him overpowered. Next up, we got the PA counter shot post. This play is a natural cover for one play touchdown. Uh, you just have to wait for this X route to cross the field. Uh, you can see how it gets behind cover four uh, drop show two. That's cover four normal. Um, I also find it works even better if you put the, uh, the B route on a smoke route. It'll uh, bring the... Uh, bring the cornerback and safety down even more because there's nothing pulling them back um, but like I said it's a, it's a natural play you don't have to do anything next up out of the week pro we got the PAF slide all you have to do is put the A on a streak against cover 2 and the B route uh, because of its release will get outside the cover 2 corner so you just have to pass lead and uh, bullet outside uh, and he'll get open he'll get open uh, outside the cornerback and outside the safety uh, you can block the running backs if you don't want the uh, the play action also finds best to put the X route here on a drag if you motion him in um, he'll do a good job of pulling that cornerback down even more even faster because he gets across the field uh, but it, the cornerback's not really the issue anyway the safety's more the issue but still it gives you a good check down I really feel like the iPhone close is one of the best formations to hit one play touchdowns against especially uh, the play that I'm going to show you first which is going to be the PA tight end leak now in my opinion this for this play right here can home run just about any uh, zone coverage in the game I'm going to go over all of them, uh, and then I'm also going to show you guys a couple of other uh, plays. There's a couple of plays here that I could use in a scheme, uh, and essentially home run just about any defense in the game. So, uh, without a doubt, I'm going to have extra plays on my Patreon and on my Join Now Community tab. So, if you want to see the full breakdown of this offense, I've probably got like eight or nine plays that I use. Uh, make sure you check that out. Link in the description below. But for now, let's go and let's pick the PA tight end leak. As far as uh, adjustments to my, uh, you know, my formation, I mean, I am going to be passing a lot, so I could put a speed back at the fullback spot, and I could. Definitely want to make sure I got my best receivers uh, here. But I don't have a great quarterback, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get it done with Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo. On the defensive side, I'm going to try to hit myself with a cover four. I hope that the uh, the Cardinals playbook has a good cover four in here. Uh, but we're going to start off with cover three anyway. So let's go ahead and let's pick uh, cover three sky just to start. Now, before I get into this video, as always, this video is brought to you by coin sponsors at MOXP.com. If you're trying to get your mud team up like mine, make sure to check them out. Link in the description below and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order now the only caveat for this play to work against cover three uh and this is different than other cover three plays that i put out in the past the other cover three plays i put out you had to flat out run it from the from the hash mark for it to work a lot of cover three beaters work very well from the hash mark one of the reasons i really like this play is because you don't have to run from the hash mark but you do have to run to the open side of the field so just the slightest um you know you don't have to be all the way to the hash which obviously can be a problem but being anywhere in the center of the field will work you just have to make sure that you run it to the open 
side of the field every time. And then as far as the setup go, I mean, you got to love the setup. It can't be easier. All I'm going to do is streak the tight end and streak the X route. That's all you have to do. There's no other adjustments needed. Uh, you have a good check down here, which is going to be uh, the fullback. So if you have, um, you know, anybody is uh, sending, uh, you know, say you get, you get shedded, you get an instant shed, whatever. You have that check down. Obviously, that wasn't a huge pickup. But a lot of times you'll have this uh, fullback in the flat. You can even motion this fullback out to get him a little bit more of a head start. And then you can see you can steal 10 to 12 against off cover which is like cover three and cover four over and over and over. But I'm going for the one-play touchdown. It's a super easy one-play touchdown anyway. All I have to do is streak these two guys, and the X route here is going to be a, uh, a super quick one-play touchdown over the top of cover three. Now, you can see he's going by like five to ten yards there. He's not even a super fast receiver. We'll go to the replay real quick just to show you guys what to look for because there is a timing thing that I think some people might suffer from. Because I get people in, in the comment section saying this isn't working, and I think it's really based off of timing, or maybe they're fading instead of streak. I'm not 100% sure, but you have to watch this cornerback here. This cornerback here is basically going to go stride for stride with this guy to a point. You can see right here, he's going stride for stride with him, but you can see he already starts to kind of go into like a little jog. The second he slows down, you just, you're just you basically just loading up. You, you just, you're just going to watch that cornerback. That's all you're doing. It's a real simple read. I'm, not, I'm just not looking at anybody else. I'm watching that cornerback. The second I see him start to slow down, I'm loading up. And I was probably late here. I probably could have threw this a little bit earlier, as you can see see i mean he comes to if i wait he comes to a complete stop because essentially the way the cover three works now is that he's going to react to this uh this slant coming across the field even though that guy's essentially double covered i mean this is a total glitch like what else could this be if you have a guy that's coming across being double covered by two guys why would that cornerback stop but that's exactly what happens so the second he stops you're just bullet and pass leading away from the safety who then becomes the closest guy he's the only guy who's actually running and it's you know it's just a super easy one play touchdown and the only thing I would say is, you know, put slide your protection to the left as well. I like to slide my protection in the direction which I'm going to throw. It just makes it a little bit easier for me um, to get this this throw off. Like, say I don't have enough arm strength. I'm not using Patrick Mahomes here. I'm using Jimmy G. You can see we got plenty of arm strength there. And that was a ton of separation. I mean, I think I was a little late on the throw. I was more paying attention to this guy coming off the edge here. Uh, but you can see, I mean, he didn't really get much of a block. I had to step into this guard. Uh, but you can see, like I said, once I get this ball off, I mean, there's just how much space is here. You know what I mean? He's got 10 yards of separation to the cornerback and 10 yards of separation to the safety. I mean, there's just nothing in the area to, to even come close to stopping this. Now, this is also a really good cover four one play touchdown. I'm going to go ahead and pick that. Now, by cover four, I don't mean cover four match. There's cover four match and then there's cover four drop. Cover four drop or cover four contain, sometimes it's called. But basically, you can see the difference. I'm talking about the one with the dark purples for people that have uh, issues following me on that. So we're going to go with the cover four drop here. This here does not have match principles. Now, the only thing I'm really going to do, motion this guy out. Um, I can put the A route here on a block. I can put the B route here on a smoke. Uh, and the fullback I don't really need. That's all I really need. I mean, I can put the A route on a drag if I want to check down. These are pretty much the only things that you need to set up to make this play work. And then you can see this guy here. He's just going to cross, uh, you know, and once again, I mean, we're getting really um, a lot of separation here. Where I am on the field doesn't really matter either. That's not important when it comes to the cover four play. But all I'm really doing, I'm just basically uh, shortening these routes so that uh, nothing pulls these safeties back. The second this, this route shortens, you're going to see there's nothing to draw these guys uh, backwards, which is why they get beat, because they essentially come to a stop as well. Um, as you can see, there's nothing really in their area, so they just kind of lays in that area. Now, this guy here, he's coming across screaming. The second he gets inside of the safety, it's the same thing. Bullet and pass it away from that safety. That's all I really need to do. And I was probably a little late on that throw. You can see I'm already starting to wind up. But you can see those guys, they can't flip their hips and get back there quick enough to make a, make a play. So it's really about waiting once this guy gets inside the safety and then bullet and passing away from that same safety. You can see we got an easy one-play touchdown again. And then, like I said, I mean, you have, you know, I, I left myself a series of checkdowns. I leave myself plenty of blocking. You can slide your protection to the right this time because that's the direction that I'm going. They have a pretty good pass rusher in that direction. And then you can see there's nothing really over there. There's nothing uh, to guard against this. You can see, once again, I'm getting a ton of separation. Uh, and these aren't very fast receivers at all, but you can see it's working out really well. Now, cover for match is another uh, coverage that I find is getting very popular. A lot, largely might be due to this channel. I know I've been pushing cover for match for a very 
long time as one of the better uh, defenses in the game. So let's go and let's pick cover four quarters, cover four palms. It doesn't really matter. Just anything that shows, um, you know, cover four quarters, cover four palms are all the same. Just as long as you have matching principles, which the easiest way to say it is going to be uh, the light purple uh, defensive zones. Now, this play is going to be a little bit different. The only thing that's really going to change here uh, is I want to motion one of these guys, either the RB route or the Y route, over. Now, the RB route doesn't go very far. Um, if I really want to motion out uh, the running back, he'll go a bit farther. So I'll just motion him out. He's better. Put him on a comeback. Uh, and then block the running back. Put the A route on. I'm just going to put everybody else on curls. I'm going to put the A route on a curl. The B route, I can put on anything like an out route. Just give myself a check down. It doesn't really matter. But you can go all curls. The curls are going to be the most important part. Uh, and then the X route is really going to be the home run route once again. As you can see, he just kind of gets inside. He's basically in a one-on-one, -on -one and we can just get a very easy one-play touchdown over the top. That's one way to do it. Now, if you want to get a little bit more separation, which obviously you do, if you smart route this X route, I find it does a better job. It'll get open quicker, uh, and it'll get open It'll just get open better. So, once again, putting these uh, other routes all on curls, or like I said, you can put the B route and an L route, smart route them, something like that. Doesn't really matter. That's going to give you another good option, though. And then we're going to have the same effect when it comes to this X route. As you can see, these, these cornerbacks just can't really handle those routes. Uh, or these safeties, rather, I should say, can't really handle those routes. Against cover two, I'm going to mirror that look. I'm going to motion this guy out, put him on a streak. That's all I really need to do. Against cover two zone. Then I'm going to block the fullback because he's not really doing anything. Put the B route on a flat and put the A route on a smart route. This is just going to spread the cover two safeties as widely apart as possible. Uh, and then I basically just want to bullet. I'm sorry, not bullet, but uh, pass lead up once he makes that break. As you can see right there, we just split those safeties. That's going to get those safeties as wide as possible when it comes to a play like this. You're going to see typically these safeties will not spread like this. But that streak's going to bring him over and all the adjustments I made are really going to bring Bring him over. I mean, by the time I get to throwing this ball, he's basically on the sideline, which, you know, I mean, wh how do you expect anything? They're about 50 yards apart. So, like, how do you expect them to cover anything? So, basically, this guy here, I just wait till he out, you know, outruns this, uh, this mid, this mid read. And, like I said, you can either bullet or lob. I think I lobbed and pass lead up, and he's just going to split that. There's nothing really there. All these zone coverages, you can just streak this B route here. A lot of times, I even like to motion this guy out to give him a little bit of a head start. Uh, and then you can just basically steal this table route all game uh, for an easy catch and run. So that's why, even in the cover three version, I left it there because it's going to be very successful. So no matter what zone coverage you're looking at, uh, you'll always have this table route. He will always be open underneath, especially if you streak that, uh, streak that B route. So that's something you can always do. When it comes the man coverages based off of the formation a lot of times you'll have inside releases uh, with your receiver so on a play like this all I have to do is put the X route here on a smart route you can see before I smart route him he's breaking at about 15 yards or more if I smart route him it'll break to um, 10 yards if you're first and 10 second and 10 whatever and in that scenario you'll get an instant easy throw uh, inside the, the man coverage cornerback. So you can steal that all game. And there's other routes that I'm going to show you in other plays where the receiver breaks outside so your opponent won't be able to uh, key in on this. So to me, that's a really good look. Uh, and like I said, I don't even like, since it's such a quick play, I like to pass block the running back. I don't even like to do um, you know the play action there because this is instant. You can just snap that up and steal that all game. And I'm getting 20 yards like nothing uh, with this read. So that's a really good setup. It's not going to one play cover two, cover two man but it's going to be a very big play against cover two man. And then obviously against cover one man, uh, you just push, you know, I'm just going to put the A route on the street just to pull that safety back, and you have some pretty good routes uh, options to the other two receivers. I would say the B route's probably a little bit better. So against cover two man, I would say the X route. Against uh, cover one man, I would say the B route. Just basically streak the A route, which I just messed up, uh, but that's okay because, like I said, this is going to be, <laughs> it's going to work either way. You don't have to streak the tight end. You can leave this tight end doing what he's doing but you have your crossers against pretty much any man coverage. The last play I'm gonna show in this video, and then I'll save the rest for my Patreon and my Join Now Community tab is the Y post. If you guys wanna see a full breakdown of this on maybe on Saturday or something like that, like I typically put out the longer versions for people that obviously have more time, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. But like I said, the last play is gonna be the Y post. You got your man beaters and your, y and your zone beaters all in one play. This was the play I was referring to when I said that they're the man beater. You know, if I go with just the PA tight end leak, um, the man beaters inside, 
But your opponent can't really adjust to that because now I have a man beater to the outside. This X route here will beat man coverage. I don't really care who's in coverage. I don't care if they're, you know, their 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 superstar abilities are maxed out or whatever. Uh, what abilities they have lit up. If you throw this play in in the break on timing properly, it will get open every time. If you throw it out of the break, say you throw it late, you throw it too early, the cornerback will make a play. But if you throw it correctly on timing, when he's in the break, he will be open every time. Like I said, I'll mess up here on purpose. I'll throw it late, and you can see that guy has a chance to recover and make a play. So it's really all about timing. And like I said, the timing is uh, if you throw it when the cornerback basically gets to a point where he's turning his back. These speed-out routes, once he gets about here, you can see the cornerback's guy's back turned. That's when you throw it. Bullet, pass lead, outside, and boom. The second he turns that cornerback, the, turns the corner, he's wide open for an easy, you know, he's got separation by about three to five yards by the time the ball's thrown so it's all about timing but you can steal this all game against any man coverage now this play also has a very good cover to zone beater but you have to run it from a hash mark you have to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field all you have to do motion this guy out put the, the tight end on the streak that's all you really have to do the cornerback should react to these other check and releases but i find it's best just to put the x route on a drag uh, i think that's going to be uh, one of the better ways to go so basically all you have to do is wait for this guy here to get past the cornerback and then you can see he essentially bails and leaves this guy to the safety and then you have a really easy one play touchdown against cover two or at the very least, a very good catch and run. So, like I said, this guy here, eventually this cornerback will drop down to the drag. And that's basically when you throw it. Bullet, pass, lead away. Um, you don't even have to do that. I mean, basically, it's just like the cover three plays. You just wait for him to essentially slow down and let the receiver pass. I could throw it at any point from here on out, uh, which you can see I'm already basically bulleting and th pass leading away. You don't really have to run this from the hash mark either. I just find you're going to have the most success. Obviously, the wider side of the field is going to create more opportunities. And then you can see right here, like there, timing was a little bit messed up because the pass rush, but he still gets passed. So it's not always going to be a one-play touchdown, obviously, but you have a lot of opportunity. And if you run it from the open side of the field, you're going to maximize your, you know, the possibility of a catch and run for a score. And then last but not least, this play can once again hit a one-play touchdown against cover three, but once again, you have to be on the hash mark. This one here is non-negotiable. You have to be on the hash mark for this to work. All you're going to do is streak this X route here. That's all you have to do. I'll block my running backs once again uh, just to give myself some more pass pro. But if you're not on the hash mark, this trick won't work the same way it did with the PA tight end leak. That's why I started with the PA tight end leak because the PA tight end leak is a better play uh, based off the fact that it can home run just about every coverage in the game. This is the exact same trick as the PA tight end leak, but like I said, you have to run it from the hash mark from this particular play to work. Uh, and that's why I prefer the PA tight end leak. But if you have this, if this is the only play you have in your arsenal, then and this is perfectly fine. As you can see, once again, the cornerback slows down. All you have to do, bullet, pass, lead away, and you can see I'm already loading up. I'm just watching that cornerback the entire way. The second that cornerback starts to slow down, I'm loading up. So that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see, like I said, a full breakdown of this, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Maybe I'll put it out this weekend. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. I'm going to out. So there's some very good man-beating plays, especially man cover one. We went over cover two quite a bit. Uh, obviously, the double outs is the exact same play as the wide post. You got the speed out on both sides. We'll just go over that real fast uh, because, you know, this is a good play. If your opponent starts to try to use her, the speed out on the one side, if you run this more to the center of the field, you can basically just beat them up on both sides. I mean, it's the same It's the same route. So that's a really nice play for somebody that's using man. If they're getting beat by the speed out on the left, you can always just switch over, beat them by the speed out on the right. If they try to use her that side or whatever, now you have it on both sides. But realistically, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. It's also a good cover three. One play touchdown once again. It works the exact same way as the Y post. This is the exact same thing. You have to run it from the hash mark. That's pretty much it. I'm just going to streak the X route. And the second this cornerback slows down, bullet, pass lead away, and then boom, you hit another one play touchdown. So it's a very similar play with similar concepts. Uh, but obviously, the real difference is having man beaters on both sides. Another really good man beater that's, once again, very similar to the Y post. you got your cover two beater, which is going to be um, on the right side. Uh, so I'm not going to bother showing that again. But you do have the out and up, which is going to be a very good cover one, one play touchdown. So I would motion this guy out just to get some isolation, put the A route on a streak, block my running backs, uh, slide my protection in the direction of where I'm going to throw. Even smart routing is something that you can do. I find that definitely has uh, some success. But this can be a little hit or miss. You can see he gets behind him. That's the only part that's important is he got behind him at the end of the day. 
but you'll get uh, you'll get differences as far as the separation goes. You'll get some some variations. You'll get some uh, some huge you know explosive uh, plays, and then sometimes you'll get tight coverages like this where you got to battle for it. So it's not a hundred percent guarantee, but you'll definitely you know it's it can be a little hit or miss. There's a couple of good run plays in this formation as well. Obviously, you have your uh, inside runs like the lead and the iso. You have your outside runs like the toss and the stretch. Uh, tosses and stretches are going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. Uh, the inside runs will be best against cover two because there's no safety in the box. I'm not going to go over those plays because obviously there's no real adjustments. But the play that I will go over is the halfback power O. So let's go ahead and let's put my fullback back in the game. There is one adjustment when it comes to the power O. So we'll go ahead and pick that. When it comes to the power O, I'm just going to flip the play and run it like a counter. Uh, this will essentially uh, open up a hole right over the center there. As you can see, it's like a counter but with no delay. Even when you have a tightly packed box like this, like I said, it's like a counter play uh, just with no delays. You can see this guy here, he comes over, kicks out that block, and you can see you have a hole. Now, I probably could have tried to take this wide uh, and try to outrun this uh, corner, but you can see once I get through that that immediate hole, there's a good 10 yards before there's anybody else even close to me. Uh, and then, like I said, I took it inside because I thought maybe I could uh, make a bigger play. But like I said, it's definitely, you know, it's one man to beat and you're gone. So, like I said, these are these are stacked box looks. Uh, I'm still having success getting through that initial hole and getting outside. So even it really doesn't matter how much your opponent really likes to stack the box. Like these looks, these are not looks that I would say typically you know would would have success here. But you can see I'm having success. I'm getting five to fifteen. This run play here to me is definitely the best in the formation, and this is how I'd run it just about every single time, regardless of what I'm looking at. Uh, as far as the, if there's not an immediate hole, like a lot of times you can just take it right outside. Like right here, that guy goes outside, I got to go inside. I'm really just reading that free defender. There is a free box defender pretty much every time. Like right here, he's in a little bit tighter. I can definitely just try to take this outside immediately. As you can see, the block, uh, you know, basically sets up that way. So I'm really just reading that one guy when it comes to my decision. So right here, he's outside. If he loops outside, I got to go inside. If he doesn't, like right there, he loops outside, got to go inside. Even though my, my pulling blocker didn't really come in time because I basically uh, just hit the gas too quick. Uh, but like I said, that's all, my, that's all I'm reading. Right, right there, he gets that block, and then you can see there's nothing but space as I'm breaking off another 15-yard run. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.